Hi, Mike. Uh, every time that there's success on the first drive of the game and then there's a little lull, fans like to say, well, it's because the first drive is scripted and the other drives aren't. Is there any truth to that at all? I mean, you really can only follow the script for so many plays. And uh, I mean, it's like the first two or three plays and it could be third down. It could be a different part of the field where you weren't anticipating being. So the script only lasts so long. Um, and that's why the fans are where they are and our coordinators are where they are. So. And is there one last thing on the scripting thing? Is there any scripting for the second or third drive? Um, yeah, there is. Uh, there's, there's scripting for the first two drives and, um, but it's all dependent on, cause I mean, you got a script for the second drive, but you get a, you get a turnover and you're in plus field position. Now that changes how you're going to call the game. And there's a lot of things that go into it. So, uh, I mean, it is what it is. And, uh, I think we got into a groove a little bit in the first drive, got, got down there, scored a touchdown. And then I've said this before, uh, you know, these defenses are also getting paid a lot of money to play football and these coaches are also getting paid a lot of money to stop us from moving the ball so that's how it happens in this league and I know everybody wants to see every drive end in a touchdown but unfortunately that's not how this always happens thanks David Mike you've consistently been a big defender of Tua from all sorts of criticism that he's faced and one of the things that people have said is why isn't he throwing the deep ball and then yesterday, he unloads a 65-yard touchdown pass. So I'm wondering what you thought and what the mood was around the team when he threw that bomb. Uh, I was happy for him. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you don't want to just force a deep ball that's not there to try to give people something to write about or people to be happy about. Like, you got to play within, within the game plan, play within what the defense gives you. Um, so that's really that. I know – I'm not going to harp on it too much, but I talked to you guys in the spring and I told you guys what I thought of all the criticism that, that he kind of gets and all that kind of stuff. So that is what that is. And I think he handles it great. And uh, yesterday was just another great example of that. Joe. Hey, Mike, I'm sure you'd like to avoid any fines if in fact they do fine players for criticizing officials. So I'll, I'll preface my comments with that. I'm, the part I'm wondering is, did you get a helpful explanation relative to what you could have done differently or better <laughs> avoid two offensive pass interference calls in five minutes? So when I was driving in this morning, I thought of two things when I was coming to this press conference. I knew that I was going to get asked about the OPI call. And I initially thought to myself, like, what can I say without getting in trouble? So I'll probably keep that to a small, uh, small margin right there. And then the other thing was I thought to myself, wow, Durham went over his career yardage yesterday, like has a new career high. I'm going to wear his jersey in my press conference today and start an initiative to, you know, get him paid here by the Miami Dolphins. You know, he's a good player, has a lot of success, does a lot of things, special teams, Offense, blocking, receiving. Um, I mean, did it take a trick play to get him an 18 yard catch? It sure did. But I mean, it, nonetheless, nobody knows that on the stat sheet. You know, an 18 yard catch is an 18 yard catch, which brings me back to your point. My 18 yard catch taken away, um, which was obviously unfortunate, but uh, the refs are doing their job and I'm doing my job. Um, we're all allowed to agree to disagree and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, I think that was another instance. I did talk to the ref after that play. Um, I invited him to come to our film session today and, uh, we could, we could discuss it. He said that he watched it on the jumbotron and he got all the, uh, the film that he needed. And like I said, we're able to agree to disagree. And, uh, that was that. Thanks. Yeah. One more. I would like to thank you for pointing out Durham had career high in what? So yesterday he went over his season uh, career high yardage 
So last year he had 208 receiving yards. Okay. On, on I think 26 catches maybe. So was the yards per catch great? No, but was the yards up there for him career high? Yes, this year with still six games to go, he's already exceeded that. So uh, happy for him. Um, and so I figured I would come in here wearing his jersey, giving him a little uh, little boost, you know, because I know he wouldn't do it for me, but I'll do it for him. Are you kidding? He's done nothing but campaign for you to get get your pay, get your money. Yeah, no, absolutely. I know I know he'll come in here and say it, but I mean, he probably won't come in here and put on oh. eight eight. So I would come in here and put on put on the jersey for him. You know, he don't, I haven't even seen him yet this morning. So this was just, you know, hey, you know what, Durham, good job, Durham. Uh, you know, we uh, we got home last night. We went out to dinner to Louis Bossies, watched the game. You know, we were having you know some fun, enjoying ourselves. Congratulations, Durham. We were talking about it. Realized that he had a career high, and that's kind of one. I did not. Up. I did not even know. I thank you for creating that awareness for you us. See that? It's, like like it's, that's it's, that's how this happens. See, Durham is a guy that kind of goes under the radar, and uh, I'm just trying to elevate his. Uh, like he's not even on the Pro Bowl ballot. So, I mean that that's another thing. You know, I mean. I think, you know, just, just get them on there. I got to get in touch with NFL.com. You know, maybe we can get them, get them on there and uh, I'll vote for them. Uh, also, I want to ask you um, when you see, I mean, new tight ends getting paid. Uh, uh, my, Mike, you, you, I know you saw that, that Godart contract. Yeah. Thoughts? Happy for him. Very happy for him. He's a good player. Um, I like Dallas a lot. I met him uh, a couple of times and, Oh, I don't have anything, uh, you know, bad to say about him. He's a, he's a good dude, great player. And uh, I think he got uh, exactly what he deserved. So uh, we'll see what happens. When you see tight ends raise the bar, you think what? I like when people get what they deserve. Thank you. Al? So I, I take it based on what you uh, started to mention a minute ago, <clears throat> Durham, <clears throat> excuse me, Durham is unaware of your campaign. Uh, yeah, you know, yesterday he was like, you yeah, you said I was slow last week. You said I ran four nine. I was like, bro, it was a joke. Relax. Um, so today I figured I'd come in here and, you know, give him all the praise and um, just start his uh, start his campaign to uh, be a Miami Dolphin, you know, next year and moving forward. Um, so, uh, Chris, if you're listening. This is my campaign for uh, for Durham. Assistant General Manager Mike Asicki, I like it. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, uh, on another note, um, I don't even know how to follow that, but yeah, I know. Uh, I know. It's, a lot, it's a lot to handle. I understand. Yeah, yeah, especially for this small brain. Yeah, um, don't don't don't, tell, don't sell yourself short. All right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you got plenty up there. Um, a, a few minutes ago, uh, Wilkins was talking about how. The team uh, wasn't panicking when when you were on the losing streak, which I can certainly appreciate. But um, was there a point when it crossed your mind about at least, hey, the, this margin for error is really shrinking for us if we want to make something of this season? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I was coming into every single postgame press conference and telling you guys that we were close. And I mean, we really were. And to be honest with you, we're still not playing our best football, but uh, we're making enough plays and just to come out on top. And at some point we got six games left and I mean, say what you want, but I think that what we want is still out there. You see each and every week, you know, some teams go down and you're shocked by it. So this is a, this is a crazy league. So there's definitely opportunity to, uh, you know, still reach our goals as, as, a, as a team. And so we just kind of take it day by day, week by week. And, uh, you know, we're this week we're on to the uh, to the Carolina Panthers and have another opportunity. What you want is still out there. So that raises a question. What do you want? Mm. I got to keep that internal. How, you know, we got we just want success. All right. We want uh, week by week success. I'm not going to put any expectations or big goals out there. Uh, we keep those internal because I feel like once once you start saying stuff out loud, then the football gods work in an interesting way. So we uh, keep that to ourselves and let everything else handle itself. Cool. Yeah. Last question, Barry. So I raised my hand before you referenced 
the football gods, and I totally get that. But is it fair to say that playoffs remains the objective? It's certainly not out of the question with the way you're playing and with the schedule ahead. I would say that for every team in the NFL, that is the objective. Um, so, and then you just take it day by day, week by week, and go out there on Sunday and just try to put another uh, another good week together and strive to reach our goals.